TIAA is on a mission. Why? Because 54% of Black Americans don't have enough savings to retire. So in collaboration with big name artists like Wyclef Jean, TIAA released Paper Right, new music inspiring a new financial future. With 100% of streaming sales going to a nonprofit that teaches students how to invest. Stream Paper Right now and help close the gap. Hey guys, welcome to today's podcast episode. Happy New Year. I'm really excited about today's guest, Alakai Simone, and she's going to talk about entrepreneurship. She's going to talk about her background, her journey. She's also going to talk about her book about the importance of personal growth, um, the five areas, long-term planning and goal achievement, long-term goals. I really love this for the audience out there who have New Year's resolutions and Alakai, welcome. Awesome. Thanks so much. I'm excited to be here and have some good conversation. And like you said, what what better time than to talk about, uh, you know, a five-year plan and goals and, you know, getting to where we want to go in life than January. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love that. And um, kind of, I love setting the stage, laying the groundwork and priming the audience for a fantastic discussion, get inspired, motivated, you know, get something done this year. Uh, start off with your experience and background. Absolutely. Well, I am here talking to you because last year I published a book called Conquer Your Summit, How to Build a Five-Year Plan and Live Your Best Life, which is available on Amazon and wherever you find books. But that's not my whole background, obviously. That's just why I'm talking to you right now. I want to share my message. I am a right brain and left brain person. Uh -huh. I grew up in art and music, but I also grew up in math and science. And I actually studied aerospace engineering through college, graduated and started working in the aerospace industry for 10 plus years doing engineering design into program management, into executive leadership of <laughs> startup. And at the same time, pursuing all my passions and music and art and becoming a muralist. So uh -huh. my background is diverse in which I, I understand all too well the, the constant tug that we all have between work-life balance or, or things we have to do versus things we want to do or how we fill our passions into our, our lives, both personally and in our career. And I said, you know what? I got to figure this out. <laughs> so my background is basically getting to this point where I, I developed this whole summit method, which I go over in my book and leading me here today to share it with you. I use this method. I've used it for the last, you know, 12 years. And now I am out there coaching and bringing more people into the way. Yeah. Really fascinating. So kind of, um, you know, talk about this, you know, your journey from, you know, just spacecraft design to entrepreneurship is really fascinating and kind of share how your experience in the space industry have influenced you, um, your summit method. You will talk about that in your approach to life planning. Absolutely. I feel like not everyone is in the space industry. Obviously, we all have very various industries that we're all in, but the space industry is very rigid, you know. You design something and you launch it into space and you cannot go back and there's no gas station up in space. There's no shop to go take it in and fix anything. And because of that, you know, the industry is very rigid. There's there's so much that needs to be done. There's tight schedules. And so on my career side, I started learning all of these very intricate concepts on how to get things done efficiently, effectively, effectively you know, hopefully on time, we all know there's delays and everything. <laughs> and not only that, but in a complex environment, in a, in a difficult engineering situation where you're, you're dealing with the elements of space. <laughs> and I feel like that really helped me put the, the technique details. So my summit method that I go over in the book is holistic with respect that it talks a lot about how to become mentally fulfilled, create planning techniques, and then have, you know, execution habits to get 
to where you want to go. And I, I believe that my time in the aerospace industry and what I did there, the, the engineering and then program management, which is inherently lots of, you know, tracking and designing and keeping things on track, that all fed towards this middle section of the summit method saying, hey, how do I actually plan? What are what are the techniques? What's the outline? How do I create something where you as the reader can just come in and take these templates and say, look, I don't even know where to begin on a five-year plan. Well, good news. Neither did I 10 years ago. And, you know, I, I used my experience in aerospace to help me organize what my life needed to be. Now, real quick, though, it wasn't just about, you know, space and my career there. It also fed off of what I said earlier, my background with art and music and passion and drive for what I wanted to do in a fulfilling life. I wanted to have personal growth at the same time. And this is when I'm coming out of college and, you, you know, whether you went to college or not, it, it, it's that time period where you're becoming an adult. You're either getting out of high school or you're starting, you know, gig work if you're going into music or whatever your career path is. We all kind of go through this transformative period where we're trying to find ourselves. And I feel like that's when we get lost. So I stumbled. I went through the getting lost thing. <laughs> I went through trying to figure out my job in aerospace, the continued work in music, and it allowed me to figure out how to take personal growth, financial freedom, career success, and community impact, these four pillars into the summit method. Yeah. Yeah. So powerful. Um, so kind of uh, the next the next question I have for you is um, you, you have a book and you talk about the importance of personal growth, financial stability, career progression, community engagement. Why do you believe these four areas are crucial to building a successful life? Absolutely. So very good question, because why not other things, right? Why just those four? You know, what happened was I was with my uh, boyfriend at the time, now husband, and we needed a change. We were in the Silicon Valley, in the San Francisco Bay Area, working, you know, we'd been working for several years now and realizing, man, we live in this very expensive area. And if we ever dream to buy a house or whatever it might be, we need to figure out how to change out of the mold that we were in. And through that change, we went on this thing called, well, it's now called the summit event or a summit retreat in my book. But back then it was just, we need to get out of this house <laughs> and go somewhere and think about life and create a five-year plan. And when we sat down, we said, okay, what do we want to talk about? Right. And, you know, it was very obvious at the end, but it just kind of flowed out naturally where we said, okay, you are your own person. Like I'm talking to you right now and I can't read your mind. You can't read my mind. You are you. And no one else can change that. That's what makes you uh, humans. Well, all creatures, but everyone is super unique by being just themselves. And so you as a person need to make sure that you, are strong whole in yourself right we all there's so many pools from social media to you know societal anxieties and you name it and it's just so many ways to get distracted that at the end of the day we have to get back to ourselves and make sure that we are whole so personal growth feeds there and everyone has their own you know definition of what feeds their personal growth maybe you're a fitness guru and you know, health is your main thing. So you're going to have personal growth goals around health. Maybe you're a travel, you know, connoisseur. That's, you know, how you feed your energy in life. Great. Travel is something you should focus on. Maybe it's spirituality. Maybe it's education. Maybe it's, you know, just working on your, your mental health. There's so many different categories. And those are all what we realized we needed to wrap our heads around for personal growth. And it's number one, not because I'm trying to advocate for people to be selfish, but because if you don't center yourself, if you don't make sure that you are good, you can't serve others. You can't go, you know, do a good job in the workplace or, you know, 
be a good role model in your family or be a good friend to those in need. So build your personal growth goals and decide what you want. But the next piece is, at the end of the day, whether we like it or not, the entire world seems to revolve around this thing called money. And <laughs> so there's not a lot of ways around that. And there's obviously many ways to create your financial path. And I I wanted, you know, we knew we need to focus on, well, what is our financial path to get to this goal of buying a house one day? So let's lay out our finances, what the good, the bad, the debt, the income, the expenses, you know, do we have savings? What's our retirement plan? What's our legacy going to be? And lay that all out. And yes, that can be very scary. And there's a lot of things that happen when you're doing financial planning, but In the book, I do go over a lot of techniques to help with that. It's why mental tools are important so that you can be strong when you're dealing with the scariness of finances that come up. So now you're you're personally whole. You've now jumped into finances so you can at least work in this crazy world. But your finances usually come from your career, whether that's gig economy or multiple jobs or a nine to five office job, whatever it might be, or an entrepreneur, maybe you're starting your own business, your career is what you're doing with your time in exchange for money. Your money goes back to that financial plan you just built and your financial plan builds for you to go and personally go off in where you want to go personal growth wise. And community is next because you've kind of filled out this cool, I'm good, I, I am stable. But we are nothing as humans without our community. I mean, you can go back in time in history and see how much, you know, group mentality and family communities come together and how important that is. So it's not last in the list because it's the last thing that matters. It's last because it's this baseline. It's this bedrock. It's this thing that, you know, you get to community and it's going to circle back to that personal growth and you're just going to keep going in a circle. You need to focus on creating goals around your plans for family. Maybe you want to create your own family. Maybe you want to, you have a great family and you want to be able to, you know, spend more time with them, have more of a relationship with extended family members or parents. Those are all things we take for granted. They don't just happen usually. You actually have to say, hmm, this year I'm going to make an active effort to call my mom once a week or month or whatever it might be. And this community is family goals. Then you have your friends, right? You, you got to have more of that network. Maybe you want to make more friends. Maybe there's friends you want to keep. Maybe there's friends that are a bit toxic. You, you need to think about that too, right? Um, and then extend it. So your community includes your coworkers. When you go to the grocery store and you someone waves to you or gives you a smile, do you do you just like, you know, blinders, you're just going through life, you know, with a frown? Or are you choosing to make goals around positivity in your community, volunteer organizations, church, whatever that might be? So that was a long explanation, but it's important. And those were the four things that we decided if you could build a plan, goals, and line up what you want in life on on just these four activities, Mm -hmm. you will build a more fulfilling life. Not just, all right, what are, you know, what are my goals for my finances, which is important. I 100% your finance goals, that's good. I teach that you need to try to have a holistic view of it. Do Mm -hmm. all four. Yeah, I love that. Um, so, so I love how you talk, you know, we talk about this um, summit event, and then I'm sure it's, um, and it's a key element for individuals seeking to unlock their potential, find their purpose. But um, one thing I'm always curious about is the tools, like the mental hacks, playing a significant role in personal transformation. And what are some critical mental tools for that you advocate that you use? Sure. So I love this question because... <laughs> I don't ever want to have a conversation with someone where I don't talk about mental tools, mostly because mental tools is the first of the three phases towards success, the three phases of the summit method. And in my first chapter of my book, that's when we dive into mental tools. That's how important it is. Because without strong mental tools, 
we can all go fill out a form, right? And put information in and be like, this is what's in my savings account. This is, you know, how much I'm spending per month or my career title is X. We can all fill out a form, but eventually you're going to need motivation or you're going to be hit up against something like, "Uh oh, I just realized I have a lot more debt than I thought I did. Or, uh-huh. oh, I, I'm in a situation at work where, I mean, I just, I don't know if I can work with my manager anymore. A, you know, the, the relationship, is, you know, not what you're looking for in a toxic workplace. Those are challenging situations. Uh-huh. So you can create a plan on paper all you want. But if you don't have the mental tools to say, how do I tackle times when it gets rough? You're going to be in a tough situation. So (laughs) mental tools are important. And the first one I talk about is finding your why. You have to know what what is your life purpose statement? What What is your deepest why? Something that drives you. Because when the going gets tough, you're going to want to say, you know what? I'm doing this because of X. I will share with you one of my life purpose statements, and you can have multiple. I suggest three to five, no more than five. These are short sentences that, you know, drive you. One of mine is, I want to help people. And that's a very simplistic way of saying it. But I remember that, you know, I I think about that when times are tough and I say, no, I got to keep coming, going because I got to make sure that I can get out there and I can help people change their lives for the better. So deepest why is important. And I do actually go through an exercise on how to do specific mind maps, because let's be honest, some of you out there are like, cool, yeah, but (laughs) how? How do I find my why? How do I determine a life purpose? You're right. It is not easy. I mean, if you already have yours, great. You're doing awesome. But if you don't, where do you start? Yeah. I do go over some methods on how to do some mind maps and start piecing out deep, uh, deep thoughts on what, what that might be. Mm. And then of course I'll leave you with, there's a couple other tools for mental tools in my book, but I, I want to make sure I at least say positive growth. Basically I believe that we all have to work on, this mindset change muscle. I think every business owner and and this mindset change muscle is what allows you to take like a bad situation and make it better, right? It's so easy for us to be negative and complain about things and that's fine. We have to have space for that. We can't just have positivity all the time, but um learning to practice having more of a positive outlook in life and and having growth statements it will change you. I mean, if you say the word can't a lot, you know, try can try. I, I don't know how to do that yet. And that it's as simple as that. That's how you change your mindset. You, you start changing your language, start convincing your brain here that you can do it. And, um, I, I just, I really find a lot of value in in working on mindset. Yeah. Yeah. Really fantastic discussion. And how can people, find out more about you and see the work that you do, follow your social medias. Absolutely. My socials is Alakai Simone Books. So that's where I'm promoting all of the the book work that I'm doing right now. I'm on Instagram. I'm on TikTok. So Alakai Simone Books. And if that's not your forte, just head over to my website, www.conqueryoursummit.com. You will be able to contact me. My email's there. You can read about aspects of the book. You can see, you know, different, you know, courses and items that will be provided there. And that's just kind of a nice little hub to go hang out at www.conqueryoursummit.com. Yeah. And for all the audience out there, let's thank Alakai for coming on and, um, you know, goal setting and a five-year plan, long-term planning. I love that. And I always love, you know, uh, the end of the year, beginning of the year, writing these things down and implementing throughout the year. Uh, for Be sure to follow her on all her socials. Be sure to check out her book as well. It's in the background. And if it's not, it's on Amazon. Those will be in the links in the show notes. And um, it's called Conquer Your Summit, How to Build a Five-Year Plan and Live Your Best Life. And be sure to check that out. I'm going to check that out as well after this. Leave a five-star review. And with that, thanks so much for coming onto the podcast. Thanks. It was wonderful to be here. And best of luck to everyone out there. 
2024 is going to be a good year. Just get out there and make a plan. Yeah. 